Hey, good morning, everyone. It is so great to see you joining us here with Pack Kids Online. In just a minute, we are going to join our worship team as we are going to worship and dance and celebrate this wonderful day together. So I hope you are ready to get up and bust some moves. Now, after worship, we are going to have a Bible lesson followed by a craft on some weeks. And every week, we do have a small group at 11 a.m. Now, how do you get into these small groups? Well, your parents can find the most up-to-date link for the Zoom groups on our Parent Hub. They will have access to the Parent Hub once they register you with our Pack Kids Online 2020-2021 registration form. Once they fill that out, they have access to the Parent Hub, they have access to resources and any events going on, um, supplies, really cool information that's going on with Pack Kids Online. So make sure that your parents register you, make sure that they check the Parent Hub every Sunday, and uh, we can't wait to celebrate this wonderful day together. So let's head on over and join our worship team. Oh, 
When you walk the path of Jesus, you'll have valleys in your life. You'll have strife. The struggles be cutting you like a knife. And life may be frustrating. But what does the word of God say? Your struggles may be several, but God gives you strength every single day. God don't really care how you talk and you're a tired. He still loves you if you're a cheater, a stealer, and a liar. Just a little bit of faith will be the one up higher. Cause a spark of God's love will set the whole world on fire. When you walk, nothing will slow you down. And when you run, you won't trip and fall on the ground. Hold on to my teaching and don't let it go. Guard it well because it's your life, it's your soul. When you walk, the path of nothing Jesus, will slow you down. Life. And when you run, you won't trip and fall on the ground. Hold on to my teaching and don't let it go. Guard it well because it's your life, it's your soul. When you walk, Nothing two, will slow one, you two, down three, And when you on. run You Louder. won't trip and fall one, on the two, ground three, Hang on, on to my teaching And don't one, let it two, fire Cause the spark of God's love Will set the whole world on fire Oh my goodness Good morning I am still so tired because I have been holding this stop sign up all day because everyone is ignoring our signs that says alert, dangerous. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jen. And one of my many jobs is I am a traffic controller and I am trying to guide people to not go the wrong way. Yes, it might slow things down and you might have a delay when you just wanna go somewhere and someone holds up this stop sign to you but it's the safe thing to do. It's so easy to be tempted to just ignore the signs and ignore the advice along the way, but these signs are here for a reason. Now, if you have been hanging out with us on Sundays, we have been going through the story and the life of Jesus when he was about 30 years old. Last week, we learned about Jesus and how he was baptized. He was sinless, he was perfect, but he still chose to obey God's will to go through baptism and to live a brand new baptized life. Now, after he was baptized, he went into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. That means that he chose to not eat any food and so that he could just pray and focus on God. Now, after 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was very hungry. I'm very hungry after 40 minutes of not eating, and this was 40 days and 40 nights. And so while he was very hungry and weak and probably very vulnerable, the devil came and started to tempt him. Now, the de devil is one who always tempts God people. And the first thing that he said to Jesus, who's so hungry after not eating for 40 days was, hey, if you are really the son of God, then why don't you turn all these stones all over this wilderness into bread? But Jesus said to the devil, he said, God's word says man should not live on bread alone, but on every word of God. So then the devil took Jesus to the top of the temple in Jerusalem and said, hey, if you are really the son of God, why don't you jump off of this temple? And the, the word of God says that the angels will come and they will protect you and you won't even strike your foot. But Jesus said, God's word says, do not put God to the test. And then the devil took Jesus to the top of a mountain and he showed him all these kingdoms. And he said, hey, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all the riches and glory of these kingdoms. Jesus said, get away from me, Satan, for God's word says to worship and serve God alone. And then the devil left and the angels came and they tended to Jesus. Now, what's so powerful about this story is that Jesus did not fall into temptation, not even once, not even at his hungriest, most vulnerable, most weakest moment. And the devil is smart. And there's another time in the Bible when the devil came and tempted someone. It's a very famous story and it's the first story. It's when the devil came into the garden and tempted Adam and Eve. But Adam and Eve 
they fell into that temptation to eat the fruit from the tree. And the devil tempted that you could be like God. Now the devil came and tempted Jesus to have food to fill his physical needs. The devil tempted Jesus to prove that he was the son of God. Have you ever had someone try to make you prove them, prove yourself to them? And then the devil tempted Jesus with glory and power and to make himself look really good. Now why would the devil tempt Jesus so much? The devil knew that if Jesus gave into temptation, if Jesus chose himself over God, that he would not be sinless, he would not be perfect, he would not be the perfect savior and sacrifice for us all. But Jesus resisted all the temptations even though his body wanted, probably wanted to, maybe even his heart and mind might have wanted to, he resisted every temptation along the way. So Jesus was tempted multiple times when he was out in the wilderness. Temptation is the desire, the yearning, wanting to do something that's probably really appealing, but something we probably shouldn't do. The way that Jesus was able to resist temptation was by thinking back, drawing on scripture, drawing on the word of God. I don't know about you, but scripture and the word of God has helped me in times that were very tempting. Remembering truths, remembering promises, remembering blessings from God, those are things that can really shield and protect us. Now, we know that the Bible tells us that when we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we confess him as our God and Savior, and the very Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Spirit that gave him the resurrection, it now dwells within us to shield and protect and to guard us. Now, let's pretend that this bowl of water is you and me. Let's pretend that this water is you and me, right? It's a simple bowl of water. And let's pretend that this pepper here represents temptation. Temptation, darkness, anything that tries to come and take us away from God. And it can make things dark, it can make things cloudy, it might be even hard to see when there's so much temptation and just things not of God surrounding us. And when we allow ourselves to be tempted and to give into it, Ugh, things can get really messy, things can get really dark, and things can kind of just ruin and mess things up for us. Ugh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. But if we rely on God, if we rely on that power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and that lives within us, is present within us, that Holy Spirit that purifies us, that protects us, that is with us, well, when temptation comes our way, darkness and temptations flee. And we're clean and we're pure. Let's be honest, there are going to be times we're going to be tempted and we might give in to that temptation and things might get a little messy and a little uncomfortable and we might really regret the decisions that we made. But what's amazing about God is that he always gives us another chance to come back and to be purified and to lean back on him and to try again. So that next time when those temptations come back, it'll flee. So one of the ways that we can uh, cling on to the spirit of God in temptations is to remember the word of God. And that's why we go through these memory verses all the time. So if you remember, the memory verse that we are doing in this unit comes from John chapter 3, verse 30. That says, he must become greater, I must become less. Again, John chapter 3, verse 30 says, he must become greater, I must become less. Can you pray with me? So Jesus, we thank you so much that you protect us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. We thank you, Father, the way that you love us and the perfect plan you have for us. And it is so difficult to run away from temptation, to run away from the things that are trying to pull us away from you. When we try to do it on our own strength, it will be really difficult. 
but help us to remember the truth and the promises that you are with us. Help us to cling on to you, to shield us, to guide us. When things are tough and difficult, even in this upcoming week, I pray for me and my friends that we would remember all these words of truth that we have been trying to remember, that we would become less, that we would have you increase in our lives, and that in leaning in you, you would protect us, shield us, and keep us clean and pure. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, friends, so now we have a really cool craft activity that we are going to do together. And then after that, we will see you at 11 a.m. at your Zoom session. Now, where do you find the links for your Zoom? Well, make sure that your parents have you registered for Petkins Online for this year. And once they do, they will have access to our private parent hub link, where you can find all the resources and links for this week. See you then. Hi, my name is Abe, and today we're going to be doing um, this craft right here. And it has our Bible verse, or our memory verse, which is, He must become greater, and I must become less. And that's John 3.30. So let's just get started. So what you'll need for this craft is just um, black construction paper, red construction paper, some white printer paper. And then you can use a ribbon or, I uh, see, I got a thin yellow paper strip. And yeah, let's just start, get started. So set that aside. So if we're first, we're gonna start with the heart, so. So just fold it in half, hamburger style. Yeah, just make sure you get it neat. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, it good, it's good to try. So let's just, so you guys should fold it in half and then try to cut out one, one side of the heart and then it'll just come, become two. So it's... Set that aside. Okay, so... Now we got our heart, so step one done. Okay, now we just take our black piece of paper. Uh, make sure it fits in like, to the center of the heart. Um, and yeah, just, just glue it on. It's pretty simple. So, uh, making sure it stays on. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we just placed it into the center. Then after, just take your white sheet of paper, make sure you cut it, and so it's just a little bit smaller than the, than the frame. And then, yeah, just glue it in. Okay, great, we got it. So now it's just the, the writing portion. So we're gonna be writing our memory verse, which I said before, uh, he must become greater and I must become less. So let's just write that in. And I'm sure you guys have learned the story about how Jesus uh, wanted to resist temptation. And he did so by going into the desert where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And, and then when Satan appeared to him, the way he, the way he tackled that issue was he recited um, scripture, which is actually how, which, which is what helped him re resist, um, res resist uh, Satan's temptation. So yeah, so we got the memory verse down in the middle. So then we're just gonna have, oh, you can just have to put another verse on the rim, on the rim of the, of the heart. So yeah, so I selected uh, Psalms uh, 11, 119.11, which is, I have hidden in your heart 
I mean, I, I've hidden your word. In my heart. That I might not sin. Not sin against you. And that's Psalms 119.11. Okay, so we've written everything down. And don't forget the last part, which is the ribbon. Um, just place on here. I'm just going to cut it a little so it's it fits the page. So it's, it's about so. It's great. Just take it and then just glue it on like so. Great, you got it. So just the word of God in your heart. show you the way